Today, I'm going to let you look inside my small dividend portfolio and how I grew that over a 10 year period from about £20,000 up to a quarter of a million pounds, all in under 10 years. Sound interesting? Let's take a look. Welcome to Destination Wealth. For those of you who may not have seen my previous videos, I produced one where I showed how I went from pretty much zero up to £54,000. That's this one. And then in this one is where I then grew it over the next three years up to £77,000. Today, we'll have another look at my SIP and show you exactly how I grew it from £77,000 over a three year period to just shy of £150,000. Stick around to the end and I'll reveal my whole portfolio of investments, including my SIP, my friend's Provident Pension, my Stocks and Shares ISA, and a small amount of crypto that I've got, and show you exactly how I reached that quarter of a million pound milestone. Now, I'd just like to say none of this is investment advice. It's just how I've invested over the past 10 years. I made lots of mistakes at the beginning. I can't even remember how I got into investing. I just I think I saw a documentary about it or maybe watched, uh, what was it called? Not Wolf of Wall Street. Wall Street, it was just called Wall Street um, with Charlie Sheen. And I thought that's quite interesting. I'd love to get into stocks and shares. And I started reading books, made all the usual mistakes of trying to buy penny stocks and things like that. And then I really fell on dividend investing, found about Warren Buffett, and Peter Lynch and people like that. And then I found the books by the UK investor, The Naked Trader, Robbie Burns. Did loads of reading, loads of research and loved it. I loved doing the research. So I decided, you know, ETFs, yeah, that's an easy way of doing it. You don't have to do much research and you do very well. But I love doing the stock analysis and just seeing how if you do get it right, you can make oversized gains. But if you do decide to invest in individual stocks, there's quite a lot of research you need to do. If doing company research and trawling through company reports is not something you like the idea of, then maybe tracker funds like the FTSE 100 index or the S&P 500 is a better option. And you'll do very well if you keep with it over the long term. But if you do like the idea of doing a little bit of research and investing in individual stocks, some of which can do very well and really outperform those indexes, then stick around and you'll see exactly how I did. So the previous videos I did, I showed the dividends that I earned each month from 2013 up to 2018 and how much they paid me each month and over a period of the year and how much all my investments put together increased. So now we'll look at the next three years, 2019 to 2021. So here we can see from January through to December of 2019. And I received dividends every single month. Some months were tiny payments like April and July, whereas others like September was a fantastic 551 pounds far more than I'd received in any other month prior to that. I was happy to have reached the point where I was being paid something passively every month of the year. That was a first. This year's income was from an invested amount of £93,470. And my total dividend income for that year was £2,492, which was the equivalent of £207 and 71 pence per month, which was a 49% increase in the dividends I was receiving compared to the previous year, which was superb. By this point, I was really focusing on plowing in as much money as possible into uh, my SIP and my stocks and shares dividend ISA, which we'll get onto later. Into my SIP, I was paying in on average about 500 pounds a month. And because of the tax relief you receive on that when you pay into a SIP, the government then topped that up to £625 a month. 
for a total year deposit amount of 7,500 for the whole of 2019. That's what I paid in. At the time, I was invested in 12 separate stocks and one ETF. Now in 2024, uh, as I'm recording this, I still own nine of these. Those being Apple, Diploma, Shell, B&M, Ecora, Trifast, Ashstead, Disney, and Watkin Jones. So here are the stocks that I owned at the time and the dividends that they paid me throughout that year. Most of them paid twice a year. Some like Shell, for example, pay four times a year, which is nice. So by the end of 2019, I was so close to hitting the all important £100,000 in the SIP. Now, all my investments combined with my SIP, my ISA, my friend's provident and my crypto that I had, they had surpassed that. But in one account alone, I really wanted to reach that £100,000 mark. So moving on, let's have a look to see how we progressed into 2020. One year later then, you can see here that I received dividends in 10 of the 12 months. I didn't receive any in July or in October, with the largest month being £439 in September. Now bear in mind, this was the time when we were slap bang in the middle of the pandemic. So companies were cutting, slashing, and completely removing dividends left, right, and center. This year, I hit £2,431.50 in passive dividend income. And that equated to £202.62 per month on average, which was pretty much the same as 2019. So even though a lot of those companies you know, didn't pay a dividend or slash their dividends, I still stayed level and didn't receive backwards. But no growth. I now owned 14 dividend paying assets. As during that year, I added one new dividend paying stock called Begbie's Trainer. Here you can see, again, the stocks and the dividends that they paid me throughout the year of 2020. Like previous years, most companies play, paid twice a year. Here you can see the stocks and the dividends that they paid me throughout the year of 2020. Like previous years, most companies pay twice a year. One, they tend to call an interim payment, which is usually smaller than the final dividend payment, which is a lot larger. Sometimes when a company has an exceptional year, like B&M did, they pay their shareholders an extra dividend called a special dividend. This is great. You don't know when it's coming, but certain companies have a track record of doing that. These are good companies to hold. The portfolio in 2020 now stood at £100,031. Yes, I'd hit that £100,000 milestone, the one I was waiting for in one account alone, and I can be happier. I was still plowing in £500 a month, my own money, and by standing order, and the government, again, were topping that up with the tax relief to £625 a month. For the whole year, again, I paid in £7,500. Let's now move on to 2021 and see what happened in the transition to that year. I received dividends in all of the 12 months this time, and the largest month being £500 in September. Companies in 2021 had started to reinstate their dividends, so there was now a really nice increase in the yearly passive income that came in at £3,156. That was a 30% increase on the previous year. And this gave me an average monthly passive income of £263.06. Every month, on average, for not really doing anything. And even though I'd only paid in £7,500 that year of my own money, well, it wasn't all my own money, some of it was tax relief, then I was extremely happy with the SIP value at the end of the year, which stood an incredible 148,787. 
so nearly 48,000 increase in one year. So throughout 2021, I hadn't paid in as much. The average monthly amount I was paying, it varied from one month to the next, but the average worked out at about 400 pounds a month. And here again is the list of the stocks and the dividends that they paid me throughout that year. You'll probably notice a couple of new ones in there. Two new ones that I still own now, Games Workshop, which is an awesome dividend payer that often pays out those special dividends. And I also bought into DSCV or Discovery. So in this chart, you can see from the first year up to 10 years later, showing the average that I was receiving in passive dividend income. Nice growth from right at the, that first year at 11 pounds a month in 2012, right up to 321 pounds a month in 2021. It's the yearly increases though that really show the compounding growth. In 2012, I received £135 in dividends. That's for the whole year. So, you know, I was only really starting to buy into dividend paying stocks at that point. So, you know, I missed out on a few and I didn't have many in the portfolio. But as I added them, by the end of 2021, this had ballooned to 3,156 in completely passive income. That's an increase of 2,237% and a total monetary amount of 13,755 over those 10 years in just dividend. And of that 13,755, all of that I reinvested back into the companies that paid me those dividends to buy more shares, which in turn gives me more dividends year on year, which essentially increases my holdings on each company for free. The stock holdings that I had throughout 2021 were these. As of 2024, when I'm recording this, I still hold eight of these. Now let's have a look at the whole SIP portfolio value over that 10 year period from 2011 to 2021. In 2011, it was actually just a friend's provident stakeholder account with my previous employer. I'd been paying in the bare minimum and it was just in funds that I had a very limited amount of funds to pick from. It wasn't until the back end of 2012 that I cashed the whole thing in and transferred it all across to the Hargreaves Lansdowne SIP. This meant I had way more control over it. I could invest in individual stocks, any funds, ETFs that I wanted. Following on from that, it was around 2017 that I really started to plow more money um, by direct debit or standing order into that SIP at around £7,500 a year spread over the 12 months of the year. I also have Stocks and Shares ISA with Interactive Investor, or it was called the Share Center, it's now Interactive Investor. I have a Royal London personal pension, uh, uh, company pension, sorry, and I also have a small amount of crypto with Coinbase. So in this chart coming up, I'm going to show you the performance and increase in all of my assets from 2011 right up to 2021, that whole 10 year period. In 2011, my total savings across all accounts were 29,653. And the majority of that was just the Friends Provident company pension that I had at the time before I transferred it into the SIP. Now this grew right up to 249,000 pounds in 2021, just shy of a quarter of a million pounds. In 2017, you can see I had a great year. I invested a total of 12,486 of my own cash. So I really started to increase those payments going in. That wasn't just into the SIP, that was into the ISA as well. And I had an increase of 27% in growth, excluding the contributions. So 20,000 pounds of that, was just increase in the dividends and the capital appreciation for the year of those stocks. And this pushed me over that all important £100,000 milestone. Now, through each of these years, I'd invested no more than £1,000 per month. And most months or years, it was a lot less than that. I'd read and heard so many well-known, very successful investors say that once you reach that £100,000 mark, the money really does start working for you and the money starts to earn more money 
and the, the amounts are substantial. It can be a real slog to get up there, but once you get to that £100,000 mark, you really start to see some big numbers coming in. So from 2017 through 2019, a nice steady average growth rate of 15% a year, excluding the contributions, that's just capital appreciation, stock price increases, and dividend income. It flatlined a bit between 2019 and 20 due to the pandemic, but then it had a massive jump in 2021 of 40% excluding contributions, a monetary gain of £67,000 in just a year. I couldn't believe it was possible to get so much growth and profit in just one year, especially as I was still learning what I was doing and I was certainly no expert at it. Now, if you really enjoyed this video, check this one out next.